Well, hello everybody and welcome to another episode. And today we're going to be looking at this camera. This is the Fujifilm X-Pro1. We have looked at quite a few Fujifilm cameras recently on this channel and this in concept is broadly similar to those cameras but it does have some differences as well. The first difference is the sensor. It's an X-Trans 1 sensor rather than the X-Trans 2 sensor found in the X-T1 and above. It has 16 megapixels but it is a different sensor. You can't do quite so many of your own cooking film simulations on it. However, this sensor, the early X-Trans 1 sensor, is often said to be just that bit nicer than the Fuji sensors that came after it. So we'll be able to find out whether or not that's true today for ourselves. Another difference this camera has is that it's made in a rangefinder style. The X-T cameras have a hump on the top here like this X-T2 and they're modelled on SLR film cameras of the past. This one is unique in that it's modelled on a rangefinder so it has at its corner here, the left hand corner, it has the eyepiece just the same as this old Zorky rangefinder does. It also has the eyepiece on that corner and in fact that was a convention amongst rangefinder cameras so in adopting that design Fujifilm have made a big nod towards rangefinder bodies and practices. So let's have a closer look at this little camera. So there is the X-Pro1 and if I turn it around You'll see very clearly there the layout with that sort of rangefinder look. We've got the viewfinder on this corner here, and generally this camera does very much resemble a rangefinder. Now, this camera has a piece of technology that many of the other X cameras don't, and that's a hybrid viewfinder that's controlled by this switch here. So this viewfinder, you can look through it in the same way that you would have looked through one of the old film rangefinder windows and you're just looking through glass. It's an optical viewfinder. If you flick this switch, the electronic viewfinder will come up. And that's a really unusual feature and it's a really nice feature too. This is quite an old camera now. It was released in 2012, so it's nine years old. And in terms of the rapid advance of digital technology, that's a pretty huge space of time. But this is a cult camera. It's still very, very highly regarded by its many, many adherents. And I know some photographers who swear by it and use it as often as they can. So I think it's high time that I shot this camera. So let's go out now and do a bit of shooting. It really is a stunningly beautiful summer day, spring day. Actually, I don't think it's officially summer yet, but it's a very, very beautiful spring day. So just walking around doing a few shots with this camera, it's a really nice thing that the viewfinder is where it is and I must admit I do keep moving my eye to the middle of the camera because I'm expecting it to be SLR style but of course it's not this is rangefinder style and the viewfinder on the left hand corner there it's taken me a little time to get used to it, but it really is nice to have it there. It really does give this camera the feeling, excuse me, it really does give this camera the feeling of an older film rangefinder style camera. And the whole experience of using it is sort of infused with that aesthetic and it goes to little details as well. This camera really does feel like an authentic experience of using one of those old film rangefinders and it's amazing how much the 
positioning of the viewfinder adds to that impression. It really is quite surprising, but a very, very nice feature and really lovely to use once I get used to it, which I am doing gradually by degrees. To make it even more authentic, I've set it to not give me an image of the picture that I've just shot. You know, on most digital cameras, you take a shot and then the image will display for, I don't know, 15 seconds or so. This camera will do that, but you can turn that facility off. So that's what I've done. And it's really taken me back to the way that I used to shoot in the film days, the way I still shoot with film when I take my film cameras out. Because of course, when you're using film, you can't see what you've just shot. You have to trust that you've got it right, that the light was right, that you've not made any errors, that you framed it properly, that it wasn't you know a little bit skew and I think to fully come together with the spirit of this camera with the ethos of how it's made I think that's the best way to shoot it in fact I usually configure my Fujifilm cameras to work that way it just seems kind of right for them but it certainly certainly is right for this one and it's another factor that means but this is a little bit like a film camera to use but more importantly than that if you don't check out the image that you've just shot and you work as though you're working with film what that does is it concentrates and focuses your mind on a different way of shooting it focuses your mind on getting that shot right first time right from the start so what we're not going to do here is take, you know, 10 or 15 images of the same shot and just find which one works or which one is technically right. Working this way forces you to think about what you're doing more carefully and to just step aside a little bit from that digital sort of spray and pray rapid fire approach and it's a much calmer, much nicer way of working. Now I've got to say this screen when you look through the electronic viewfinder when you activate the electronic viewfinder this screen is really not the best it doesn't have a lot of detail I don't know the exact figures for the resolution but it really doesn't have much detail and the, there are points actually there have been quite a few points where I've gone back to images that I've shot and I really haven't been sure, looking through the uh, electronic viewfinder, that the images were in focus or not. It's really not a very high-res viewfinder, and I don't find it particularly useful for checking whether shots are in focus or not. That might be something to do with the fact that my eyesight isn't quite as good as it was a few years ago but I don't think so it's usually pretty easy to see on an electronic screen whoops on an electronic screen whether you're in focus or not and it's not particularly easy on this one unfortunately one of the nicest things about this X Pro one is that hybrid viewfinder it really has been quite a revelation using it it's taken me a little while to get used to because I've not shot like this before but it, it's a great little thing it, it works only on the electronic lenses the modern Fuji electronic lenses if you put a vintage lens on there or another manual focus lens on there it won't work because there needs to be some electronic feedback between the camera and the lens for this to work the camera has to know what the lens is doing if you use an electronic lens you'll get those frame lines and I've got one of those with me today so I'm going to be using that in conjunction with I've also got this lovely old Carl Zeiss Jena which is my gold standard for 50 mil lenses I've not found another one that betters it many come close but none have bettered it yet so I'm going to be shooting 
with that too. It really is quite remarkable technology. The frame lines are projected and they change as you zoom the lens if you're using a zoom lens. I don't know how they're projected. They, I guess it must be optical or electronic projection of some sort, perhaps using a small amount of the electronic viewfinder. But however it's done, it works really, really well. You can see exactly where your shot begins and ends. Of course, you can do that too with the electronic viewfinder. Uh, and that gives you an exact representation, as it does on most digital cameras, of what the sensor is actually seeing. So using the EVF, you get an absolutely accurate um, representation of of what you're shooting. If you're not using the EVF, you get those frame lines, uh, but you've got to be using an electronic lens to activate those. So I think that's enough uh, yakking from me. I'm going to get on and do some more shooting. Using these frame lines is quite an unusual experience for me, and I've got to say, um, I don't know, I think I'm missing the electronic viewfinder. Uh, I haven't used it much today purely because I want to explore this frame line malarkey. It makes such a nice change to look through glass for a change. Even though I do kind of miss the EVF, it is nice to look through glass. You can see the lens in the bottom right hand corner like you can in the old Leicas. You can see the top of your hat if you happen to be wearing one if you're using a wide lens. It's a very interesting, very optical experience if I can call it that, if that makes any sense. What we're looking through here is pure optics rather than the whole image being mediated by coming through a chip, going through a processor and going to a little screen. With this, the light is going directly to your eye just through some glass. And it really is quite a refreshing experience. Yeah, it really is. It's quite something to use. Really takes me back to the old days. Is it a good system? Is it any better than an EVF? I don't really know, to be honest. It's probably better than this EVF because this one isn't very high res. But better than a modern one, better than a, a more nicely specced, higher definition one? I don't know. I suppose if you're used to shooting with rangefinders and you like the frame line style of shooting, then this would be a very good way to go. The X Pro cameras, even the newer ones, are far, far cheaper than any Leica you can imagine, even one of the old film ones. And I don't think they give away anything in image quality. I, I think pretty much all cameras have fantastic image quality these days, and the image, uh, the difference can only be one of details, if, if there is one. One thing that frame lines do allow you to do, and this I've found really interesting is that you can see what's coming into your shot and what's going out of your shot you can see what's around it you can kind of compose in your head recompose uh, you might think to yourself oh yeah that could do with being a bit wider and it's easier to do that because you can see where you would widen out too now this camera has a top shutter speed of one four thousandth. I don't know actually, it's just occurred to me it may have an electronic shutter, so let's have a look for that. Let me put my glasses on and see what we've got there. This is exciting isn't it? Watch an old hippie in a park put his glasses on. There we go. Let's have a look. There must be an electronic shutter, surely. Can't see it yet. No, unless I'm being particularly daft, 
which is entirely possible. I don't think this camera has an electronic shutter, so it's it's really like working in the old days. You know, you have a set shutter speed and you can't go over it. And this camera's top shutter speed is one four thousandth of a second. That would have been, been considered very, very fast back in the day, back in the film days. So I suppose I ought to think myself lucky, really. The peaking on this camera is not as prominent as it is on other Fuji X cameras that I've had. Uh, I've had an X-T1, uh, an X-T10 and an X-T2 and on this one the peaking is far less prominent than all of those cameras and I would assume other Fujifilm X cameras as well. And it does get to the point where it's a little difficult to use, especially if your eyesight isn't quite as good as it was you know, 30 years ago or something, which is the case with me. I really don't find this peaking particularly easy to use. It does work and you can use it with a little practice and it's far, far better than no peaking at all. But it's really not that prominent. It's also limited only to one colour, which is white. And that's a difficulty as well because it does need, really when you're uh, using peaking, you do need different colours to compensate for different background colours and so on that you might be photographing. So as far as peaking goes, yes it's there, yes it works, but it's not the best that I've seen. So actually, I've really enjoyed shooting with this little Fuji. It's been a really interesting experience. It's a camera that takes the Fujifilm philosophy, maybe pretty much as far as it will go. That's the idea of making digital cameras that resemble film cameras. And this one really does resemble a film camera. If you've shot a film camera, well, you will recognize this way of shooting and you probably will be comfortable with it, I would think. On the other hand, if you've never shot a film camera before and would like to try a more relaxed way of shooting, a method of shooting that doesn't involve sort of continually checking and rechecking what you've shot then I would recommend this camera I think this camera is ideal for that it's a very very nice camera in itself also I've shot lots of images with it today but I won't really know what they're like until I get back and have a look on the computer but the images I've shot with it so far the, the few that I've seen from it so far on a larger screen are really beautiful actually and do have a special kind of quality that later X cameras perhaps seem to lack. They do have a soft and gentle sort of feel and to use that overused phrase they also have a slightly filmic feel as well. So here we are back again, safe and sound after our adventures. And I've got to say, I've really enjoyed shooting this little camera. It's the only camera that I know that gives you the experience or some of the experience of shooting a film rangefinder in a digital body. And I've really come to bond with this little camera. In fact, if I didn't need the X-T2 for video, I'd be tempted to keep this over the X-T2 just for stills. That's how nice a camera it is. So there is something special about this camera. It really does feel like a special little machine and it may be the most successful of the Fujis that I've tried overall for integrating the qualities of film and digital and feeling like a film camera in operation. It's very similar in many ways to using a Leica M camera and it's a very, very much cheaper way of getting that kind of experience. The M cameras cost several thousands. These, you can find a good one of these for between, 
I don't know, around 230 to 250 pounds or thereabouts. They're not the cheapest of the Fuji X cameras, but they're certainly not the most expensive either. And for a fun little camera that you can use like a rangefinder and that will give you the feeling of the old manner of shooting, I don't think this one can be beat. So that's it from me for now. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and ring the bell before you go. And if you like the content on this channel and you'd like to help it grow and develop, you can do that at patreon.com forward slash xenography. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time for some more xenography.